Welcome to the OSRS Podcast, where we talk to RuneScape content creators about RuneScape content. I am Mitt Cow, one of the hosts, followed by... What's going on, boys? Rakes, as always. And hello, it's Weisco. So, today we are honored by the presence and blessed by the king of the Grand Exchange, Mr. Flipping Old School RuneScape. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem at all, dude. So... We thought it'd be a great idea with the recent blog post that got posted sometime last week regarding the Grand Exchange taxing. Uh, to have Mr. Flipping Old School RuneScape to come on, this man is a master of the craft. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen his videos already. And uh, before we do that, we are going to do a general Q&A, and then we're going to jump into the blog post. So let's get nice. it started, boys. And before yeah. we do that, do we do a sellout? Because we always do a legends. <laughs> <laughs> so boys if this podcast gets um rakes you're the light guy what do you think man what number oh, i i think dude i think we we're struggling to crack a thousand right now Let's and go it's for a thousand, you know? i think a thousand is yeah i think it's a a humble number i think that they can do oh. it uh but what's gonna be the reward for them rice cup what we <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe Mr. Flippin here can uh, provide some uh, some fine dine, um, you know, new uh, <laughs> meta flipping uh, strategies for the new updates coming out for like next and stuff. Maybe you know. Oh yeah, that could, video that could happen. Or that could happen. You know? yeah. Do you think? Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man's I'll give a secret it. strategy. One secret item. Ooh, yeah, if it hits one k. Only if it hits one k. Yes. That's that's a, how how about yeah? If it gets one k likes, flipping will come back to the video. And he will leave a comment on the video for one hour, which will Ooh. reveal that one item. And then Ooh. he's going to delete it forever. How do you even get notified for that? Do you just do you, constantly you know, refresh <laughs> the comment <laughs> section? No, no. Gonna, leave, like, it leave it there for a day. It's only for super fans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then we'll tweet we'll about it. it. You got to follow our no. Twitter, dude. No. <laughs> Yo, we'll post it in the community post, you know, for, for, okay. for like the okay. lo most loyal, you know? Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. And we will also do more videos. Yes, in case you want more podcasts, man. We'll get a little uh, little more on it. I know we've been lacking for the last week or so, but uh, yeah. you know, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming to RuneScape, Ooh. and that means we got a lot of exciting stuff to talk yeah. about. But uh, let's jump into the Q&A with Mr. Flip in here. I would, I would like to start. Uh, what is the best flip you've ever done? Ever? Ooh. Maybe That's top five question. or something. Top five. Okay, one was Truver Parchments. You remember when those came out? The oh, yeah. uh, Arts yeah. of French Word. I don't know how you say it, but uh, yeah, that was one of the best. It wasn't like a single flip. But I flipped like 200 of them in a day for like 200 mil. That was super good. Um, but I think Eldritch Orbs, were, like I uh, did that like two years ago. Or no, maybe it was only a year ago. They dropped that they're going to buff them in the Q&A. And I like ran over to the Grand Exchange quickly. And like bought like four of them and got like a two hundred mil profit. Damn. Um, but probably upcoming soon, we'll probably break that. I hope. Oh, I hope so, dude. Yeah. That's exciting, man. Um, so for my question, uh, flipping old school, how long have you played RuneScape for? And initially, when you started playing the game, what was the thing that interested you that dragged you into it? Well, I started playing when I was six or seven. And I didn't have a computer at home, so I always had to like go down to the library, uh, which ironically I still sometimes do today. <laughs> Just casually play RuneScape in the library. But uh, <laughs> what what originally brought? What was the other part of the question? Sorry. What What was the thing about RuneScape that like grabbed your oh. imagination that got you so into it? It was one of my first MMOs, and they were just such. A novelty at the time and i i guess i just really like mmos in general just having strong progression and just an account that you can just have with you for a long time and just the whole social dynamic of it at the time as well was like huge like i had never played anything like that before um so yeah pretty much after that i just continued playing mmos and then and then runescape's addictive too <laughs> oh, yeah. do you remember like what year it was that you started playing <clears throat> i think maybe like 2000 Four? It was RS2 for sure, but it was like right as Slayer was added, I think. But oh, I didn't man. have membership, so I was just like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> Giant rat. <laughs> yeah. That's also, awesome. before we get deeper into the questions, man, I, I think we all forgot. Uh, Flippin has a very unique YouTube channel for RuneScape, so if you can give us a nice little overview of uh, your channel, that'd be amazing for the newer audience. 
yeah my my channels is like kind of a variety channel compared to a lot of people's it's not progress video based mostly although i do have some like ongoing series um it's probably a combination of a news channel an economics channel and it pretty guides like anything i kind of feel like doing i haven't really found a specific niche which has been good and bad at the same time it's like an informative <laughs> channel kind of yeah mm. yeah is it uh, is it also a trading channel too right like i know <laughs> you make those videos on the q and a's and then the um the blogs that come out but mm-hmm. you get pretty deep into trading and flipping and then starting an, an account at like I don't know, zero GP and then trying to make your way up, right? Yeah, I do a lot of like market analysis as well for um, just my own curiosity, not really um, as like an investing advice or anything like that, because I think that's just not going to mix very well with an actual public figure just telling people what to do. Uh, So just kind of for uh, informative reasons. And then we do weekly recaps. I've done quite a lot just surrounding the Grand Exchange. Some of them are just actual progress series where I'm physically locking myself there. I have like a G locked account. Um, And yeah, just lots of flipping challenges. And uh, currently we're trying to do one where I'm trying to earn the most expensive gear uh, in pay to play for like every offer uh, for every equipment slot, which uh, when I thought of the idea, it was only like three or four bill. And as soon as I started all the rare items, like doubled in price. So I like screwed myself kind of but you know it's a lot to shoot for yeah Yeah. um so how 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 let's kind of talk like timeline wise you know when you start playing runescape to like now like what what's what's kind of like your overall progression you know in in runescape (laughs) like kind of like how many times i came back (laughs) yeah exactly yeah and i probably played pretty consistently until like middle school and then uh just occasionally in between then and old school and then i hopped back like right as old school started i uh, didn't really play that much and then um 2016 i guess is when i like started full-time playing again and like how does that tie how does that tie to your channel you know like like you know like you're progressing the the uh, the, the game you're you probably had certain goals right like but like, how did that kind of transpire into the idea of like, you know, focusing a lot on the GE, right? As kind of mm-hmm. like a focal point for your gameplay or and or videos. Well, those kind of got formulated at the same time. I wanted to make a YouTube channel primarily, actually. And then RuneScape was just the thing I picked instead of what a lot of people would probably think would be the opposite. Um, so, yeah, and originally I picked flipping because for my YouTube channel, I wanted to pick something really niche to start with. So I'm like, hey, I'll flip in RuneScape. And I hadn't really played RuneScape that much before that point, like off and on, obviously. Um, So I picked flipping in RuneScape in free to play. It was my first video idea, just because it was so niche. I'm like, okay, no one's doing that. If someone searches for it, they'll find it. Obviously, really loved the game. I started playing it a lot just for fun. Because obviously it's not a career when I made one video, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's kind of how it started. <clears throat> Dude, that's that's awesome. Um, I, I I feel like a very obvious question to ask is like, you do a very niche thing in old school RuneScape, specifically flipping. Use the Grand Exchange. Um, like, did did you have like some kind of um education which is to do with you know like finances or? anything like that like what is it that intrigued you so much about flipping on the grand exchange to begin with yeah good question uh no formal training so yeah i didn't go to school for any of this but it's something that's interested me for a long time like pretty much any game i've played it's like how can i make money in this game even though it's fundamentally pointless because i'm you know, not gonna do anything with this money i just wanted to try to get as much as possible um so yeah i did that originally when i played runescape uh, and other games like maple story i'd flip a lot um it was a lot more fun when you kind of went person to person it, it just it was more exciting back then but that, that excitement kind of still went forward into the grand exchange era yeah I, I could see that now i asked you before like your biggest 
merch that you've done. Is there any substantial losses when you uh, started merching? Yeah, uh, well, the most substantial losses have been recently because I have more money to lose, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, when I first started, you you kind of just do safer things generally, so I can't really recall any like gigantic losses or huge mistakes. Obviously, loads of mistakes, but uh, probably the more one of the bigger losses recently is I bought a third age axe. Uh, and it, it like dropped like 200 mil. I wasn't even paying attention. I'm like, okay, I guess that's gone. <laughs> it just dropped 200 mil, bro. That's nothing, man. <laughs> that's huge. Yeah, that, bro. that happens a lot. <laughs> oh my God. That, that must be spooky trying to flip these crazy risky. I well, not risky, but just crazy high price items. Cause mm. the higher price an item is the bigger the margin. But then also the bigger the risk, right? So that probably yeah, stings but, you a lot. I still have not figured out the third age items. They're just kind of, there's obviously a strategy behind it, but I know smarter people than I already have like a monopoly on it. So I was like, I have to I have to get way smarter and figure out how to actually make money doing this and not just get merched. I was probably the one who got merched there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring up merch yeah. clans. And I, I feel like I've almost heard someone talking about how merch clans do have a monopoly on third age items, specifically the newer the ones. One. Yeah, yeah the because third age items. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because not only are they more rare and they're more recently added to RuneScape, not super recent, but more recent than regular Third Age. And if they buy them all up and the demand's still there and they have all the supply, so do you have any opinions on merch clans or maybe what items they might actually hold? I mean, I saw Cabbage Shields do some weird stuff. <laughs> some weird well, stuff, you rem- man. You remember a guy called Wilson, I think was his name? Uh, he was Wilson. like in- infamous for hoarding the Third Age longswords. It was oh, like yeah. Uh, yeah. three, four years ago or something like that. Yeah, he um, got banned. <laughs> <laughs> did he? I mean, sorry. Sorry, yeah, Wilson, wait, did I didn't know. Wait, wait, wait. I'm pretty sure he did, yeah. He might have, I'm not sure he got banned for this exact thing. But, oh, uh, no, yeah, he, he got banned for something. What did he get banned for? Sorry, I, I think he I think watched he my stream. For trading or something. <laughs> okay, that I makes mean, sense. At <laughs> that point, I'm sorry. Keep going, man. Uh, well, anyway, yeah. So he, he would buy the Third Age Longswords whenever they hit the grand exchange or uh whenever someone wanted to sell one and he just he had all of them so he just monopolized the price and sold them for billions and billions and that's probably what's going on with some of the the third age juridic items maybe not but like i could easily see someone trying to replicate that again yeah the lower the supply the easier to manipulate um i don't know if you guys have any stories about when runescape first came back and there was no grand exchange Oh, but, I got uh, merged with Third Age before. Oh, back then. <laughs> did you? Dude. Yeah, yeah. Man, I had a, a killer moneymaker when there was no Grand Exchange. So there used to be a lot of defense pures, but there aren't so many now. Uh, I think it's because of the Serpentine Helm or the DF. I can't remember what they... They did something. There was an update in the game that basically ruined defense pures in some way. And um, probably the most popular weapon for defense pures is the Red Topaz Machete. Oh, yeah. So when, <laughs> when Old School first came out, I figured out how to get them. And I mean, the margins on those things, man, I was selling them and it was back when it had the, um, it was like the box that was in the bank where you could, you could list your item, but it wasn't a grand exchange. Do you know, do you know what that was called again, guys? The trading trading post. post. And I would have people message me (laughs) and I would literally have a margin from like 200K per machete. And these things weren't hard to get to like a mil plus. And I would sell them all day long. And I made I made a load of money off those things. And they were so easy to get. But you had to like use your mind a little bit. You had to do a few quests to be able to get to the point where you could actually get them. I, that was a lot of my early money in this game, to be honest. Quite a fair I'm bit. Just, I'm just interested in everybody's early um, money makers before the Grand Exchange, man. Yeah, we so can probably just... expand on it later. For later? More, for more funsies. I mean, like I can talk about one of mine, but like, you know. Because we got my to my clutch things. one was going to the wilderness and picking up big bones. So that was like my <laughs> go-to one at the time. I like that. Big yo, that yo, viewers, one. <laughs> let us know in the comments before the grand exchange what was your money maker? Because they definitely changed over time. I mean, now it's four calf, right, or something. Yeah, um, now it's meta. <laughs> yeah, Rice, tell us yours, dude. What were you doing, Mister Tebow? Oh, dude, I did a lot of shit, bro. But I, I'll, I'll tell you the I'll tell you the best one. All right. So back back when old school came out. Okay, actually, we got to go back even more because uh, many years before that, right, in the original RuneScape, I remember doing Freemanic Isles for the first time. And there's, you know, you got to go through a bunch of ice trolls. And I think on the way back from finishing the quest, I was going back to the bank. 
I, I just decided, you know what, let's just kill this ice troll because he's bugging me. I killed it and it dropped a rune kite and I was like, what the heck? It dropped the rune kite. Like, what? This thing has like no HP, dropped the rune kite. So I, I was like very like, wow, you know, stunned by it. So so then I, I figured out that these things just drop lots of rune kites, grand shields, and rune hammers, right? And like nobody was ever there back when I did it. So when Osku came out, I was like, I, I got to go back there because no one's going to smith rune kites for a while. That's like 90 plus smithing. And so I took I took a gamble and I rushed that quest and I you know I went there and I started camping rune rune kites uh, over there and for a while they were selling for one one twenty k each because <laughs> nobody oh can God. make the rune kites nobody for like two weeks <laughs> so I was just yeah. there for like two weeks just killing ice trolls selling rune kites you know for one twenty k but then the one guy got you know ninety smithing so then it started crashing to like fifty k and that's my stop I was like ah oh, yeah. it's over dude it was that good while well lasted. <laughs> That was so early. Yeah, yeah. I know, you... I know. I only ever saw one other guy there. One other guy. In two weeks, there was just one other guy that showed up, like in, in my spot. I was like, I was like, damn, you know? It's like, yeah, it was crazy. It's just like he knew, I knew. I only told like two friends. And I think I made like I think I think it made like seven mil in like the first week or two. Yeah. Just selling rune kites. It was good. We were all rushing fucking Cook's assistant. This man's out here grinding yeah, rune tights. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was yeah, that way was part of my idea. Good. That was good. All right, all right. I'll save more, you know, for future, you okay. know, future part of this podcast, though. So, yeah. if I if I may, to go back to the Q and A, um, I so with my experience with merching, I I have these random successes, and then I get burnt really bad. Like I'll end up making a ton of money, and then I'll just have a merch that goes so bad. I'm like I'm negative mm -hmm. in profit. So, yeah. my question to you, when we were talking about the third age axe, you said that you haven't quite got it down. Um, like, how do you figure out which items are really profitable to, to flip? Like, do you use like a third party website or software to look at like graphs or is it sort of like, like, is it instinctive? Is it usually tied to like an update that's coming out? Like, how do you determine which items are worth flipping or not? Yeah. For like merch, for both merchant and flipping, I pretty much always use like a third party tool, but, uh, that's just to get like better information the wiki is good too and obviously the new uh the wiki has like live data what, on it too now or they have an actual exchange website what so kind of really things good. do you actually look for though to like to tell if it's going to go up in price or not if you're looking at like the graph and the history and such well by far the easiest items to choose or at least for merching are items that are being changed so like any update is a guarantee or it's so much easier to determine whether the price is going to go up or down. And in the end, it doesn't really matter how nerfed or buffed the item is getting. You just have to guess what other people think. And then you can just merge the people. Who's going to that, That's the most consistent way to get money without taking a huge risk. Um, that's why I usually sell merches like before the update actually drops. Because after it's like a, it's a dice roll. Unless you really know what you're talking about. <laughs> nice. Pretty much. Oh, I have a question though. So you you said you didn't do a background on like obviously you know economics and stuff like that. So what did you do for school? I'm assuming you you went to uh, uh yeah I went university not very long. I did like a one year graphic design. So essentially, I just learned how to use Photoshop. That was like oh, my one year. Perfect, bro. That explains no the wonder. Yeah. <laughs> a pointy up yeah. arrows. We got it. We got yeah. it. The green yeah, arrows. I learned that man. there. So they so what's the transition? The so what was the transitioning point then to kind of like deciding like I I'm done with school. I want to do something mm. different. You know, what was, what was that? I about? was done with school just on a personal level. Like I didn't have any goals in mind. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping out. <laughs> um, and, uh, I just wanted to move away from home and like just kind of go do some things. Um, but yeah, I, there was no game plan. I, essentially, I came back from a trip to Southeast Asia with this goal in mind that I wanted to make a YouTube channel and make that work. I have no idea where that exactly came from, but it was, yeah, it was just a couple of years of just trying to self discovery sounds really cliche, but uh, yeah, no, 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 yeah, that's no fair. <laughs> Man, sounds about right. It's, it's kind of funny you say that because the same thing happened for me when I was in New Zealand, which is like mm. pretty much just as far away as Southeast Asia. Where I do you think it has anything to do with like the beauty of the world? Like I know that we're getting a bit philosophical here, mm. but like I know when I was out in New Zealand, I was like, this place is so beautiful, man. I'd love to just be able to live here. And I was like, 
how do you live here? Like, how do you mm-hmm. figure that out? It's like, oh, I could just make online videos and maybe one day this could happen. I don't know. Yeah, that that thought definitely came up. I, there's a word for it. It's like epiphany or something. Yeah. Yes, 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 that. Um, but like the the way you just travel around and work remotely, essentially. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a specific word, but yeah, that that mm. did come up. It, I thought that that would be so cool. Um, now, interestingly, though, having potentially have the the option to do that, I'm not sure if I would. <laughs> like I would travel, but I don't think I would work and travel. It's just I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> travel is an escape now. I, I think like mm. staying in hostels and making YouTube videos is pretty rough. But um, yeah. a little a little off topic. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of a YouTuber called the Lazy Peon. Mm-hmm. He makes yeah, he makes MMORPG videos like in depth reviews and such. He lives in Thailand and like his setup is insane. Like he he rents like a traditional Thailand like villa and he just what? plays MMOs all day. It's you got you should check it out after this podcast. It's really cool and quite inspiring actually. But yeah, that way off topic. Yeah, dude, that's, that's where we need to get cool. our house, dude. The OSR's podcast house, nice <laughs> villa somewhere. I don't know, man. I can feel that. Yeah, was there was there any uh, family pressures though uh, at the time? I'm I'm assuming there might might have been some conflict, right, of interest um, between yeah, how you want to do things. Not really. I, my, my parents were pretty chill about it. Oh, I probably could have yeah. told them I was going to drop out instead of just dropping out, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, they were just kind of like, "Yo, you do you, man." You know, yeah, pretty much actually. As long as I was working or doing something, but I moved away pretty much right away. So, I mean, what can they do about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dang, your parents are cool. Yeah, 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 they are. (laughs) They sound very chill. So, um, I have one more question to ask you on the QA. So, just out of curiosity, it when you started making your old school RuneScape flipping YouTube channel, is this like the first time in your RuneScape career where you've really like dived into doing flipping I, I like did you did you do this previously without doing the youtube videos or like has it just sprung up from when you started your youtube channel yeah back in uh, i think like 2007 2008 i dabbled in it but i was very unsuccessful um so yeah it was pretty much just like straight up when i started the, the youtube channel well I, like a couple months before i was experimenting with it but honestly through most of the my youtube videos it's like me obviously just learning at the same time as making them instead of just being like an expert at the time yeah which i think some people appreciate and some people are like you're an idiot <laughs> but no that's know. really cool that's <laughs> it's quite relatable as well actually because like yeah, it, what, what, when i first started my making one bill series i i ain't gonna lie to you i wasn't sure if i could do it i was yeah. like i'm just gonna try this out and see how it goes <laughs> yeah yeah so sure. <laughs> all right one last question about the youtube side of things so you know, obviously, you're starting it. You're learning everything from scratch. I guess what were some of like your your most eureka moments? You know, so far as you've been kind of like going through this journey of building up this YouTube, right? Like whether whether it's kind of whether it's technical, whether it's just like some strategy about getting more viewers, you know, things like that. Things that kind of just yeah. like wow, it's that easy, you know, kind of thing. There's so many, but uh, yeah, obviously, just, just, just realizing how many, how much, how important a title and thumbnail is. And trying to figure out one thing I noticed recently is aesthetically how the title physically looks is kind of important, which is so metagaming. But like yeah, it's if weird. there's like certain things are capitalized or like how long it is or how nicely the words look together, there's just like so much to it. And like there's it, you could s- take an entire university course on all, all of this, essentially. Um, but yeah, just obviously good content is the most important by far. But being able to market yourself with like good metadata and thumbnails and all that is probably the next most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that cool. thought goes into my mind every time I try to make a yep. video or a thumbnail mm-hmm. and I'm like, should I put this yeah. here? Will it shine more light? Will the eyes attract or like um, how the eyes go from left to right when they read. So you kind of want to yeah. have them kind of following the line. Same yeah. with the title. Use the it's source. Like, Sometimes I'll take longer coming up with the title and thumbnail than editing the entire video, which is like either I don't edit long enough or I spend way too long on the other thing. But you know, yeah, (laughs) 
That's where I got to throw some props to Solo Mission because I don't know what his brain yeah. does, but he just generates He's these the marketing things. master, bro. Yeah. yeah it's really. like all caps. I started doing all caps. I'm like, it's not working for me. And then you got his ass. It's got like five heads in front of Zoro. And you're like, where does he think of this stuff, man? It's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. No, no, so- so mission, he's he's a marketing guy. Like he's he's, he's got the marketing brain, dude. Yeah. And the neck. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I guess. Do you guys want to jump on over to the new taxes that are going to be coming in the RuneScape and the new uh, economy coach? Yeah. Do you want me to do the background or maybe like? Yes, please. That'd and... be awesome. Yeah. All That'd right. Okay. All right. I'll quickly. I'll I'll try to be as quick with this, but um. Uh, if you've been playing RuneScape the past like a year or two, you'll notice that items in general have gone down a lot. It's like, okay, there's the, there's a very simple fact that most of the time items generally do go down over time, right? No matter what it is, but but for a long time, it's it's usually kind of like you know more of a steady, you know, downward. But like the past year and a half, it's been like kind of like this, like really really noticeable, right? If you check any graphs on most equipment, you just see that it's just you know plundering down and of course there's uh, many guesses as to what's causing it could be you know uh more real world traders doing pvm nowadays or more events bought clients that are harder to detect you name it right there's there's a bunch of different you know variables that, that could be in play here but but the fact is you know things are going down like crazy right and and um there's just a lot of these items coming to the game i guess and not enough people buying it so jagex obviously is starting to take some action and they're proposing this idea of item sinks which is going to work off the ge they're proposing item sinks with ge tax right so so let's say deck scrolls right they they're going to select an item uh in the ge in the future where uh if you buy it buy and sell a, a deck scroll and it's like you know transactions finish the ge is going to take two percent of that off the sale right so you only get 98 percent of the value and the ge will hold on to the value up until it holds enough of the value that it can buy itself a dex scroll. So let's say the dex scroll is 20 mil, right? If the GE value taxed total is 20 mil, it'll, it'll eventually buy out a dex scroll and delete it from the game. So so essentially, as you you know, the more you buy and sell this specific item in the GE, the the more it will delete from the game. So the idea is to delete enough that hopefully the prices will go back up. And and of course. It, I'm not here to judge whether or not this method is good, you know, like effective. That's what we're going to talk about here. But yeah, essentially, that's kind of like their proposal here is a tax system with the GE that can buy out certain items and delete from the game to kind of buffer up the prices a bit. Yeah, that's pretty much the general idea. I got to say, that was a great explanation because I yeah, understood that was an it. awesome summary. Dang. <laughs> you, know, you know why? It's because I've had to explain this to people on Twitch like the past few weeks. <laughs> oh, you've, you've been practicing. <laughs> yeah, Professor <laughs> Rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah, i i heard yeah. that they are actually hiring um or this may have come from the hire of the tax or not the tax but the uh, gaming economist specialist right yeah. like uh, they hired someone to come over and fix the runescape economy which i just gotta say isn't that a crazy job to have a ga- yeah. a job where you fine-tune the economy of an mmo I really it's wonder who thing. who was that? Gimmicky like, though, bro. It who, sounds so gimmicky. Whose job is that? No, no. Dude, I want that job, man. Me and Flippin', yeah. we'll go take that real that, quick. You can't get that much work. Like, how often is that going to come up? Like, I'm not at the same time. I'm just here thinking, like, yo, this guy must be such a good, like, like he must be charismatic because that's such a bullshit yeah. job, you know? Like, Bryce, like I gotta disagree you even, with you, bro. You know, because like, in my mind. Because uh, I'm not going to talk about the real world and where our finances are at, right? Because that's not yeah. what our podcast is about. Uh, yeah, Something's yeah. wrong there. But then we yeah. go and play video games. We're like, hey, it's fine. It's a video game. It's going to be fun. Items are great. We get money. Oh, why is everything crashing? It's because you have to fine tune it. You have to make items come in the game and then disappear in some sort of route where players enjoy it. They're building yep. their experience. They're farming items. They want to farm rare stuff. But it can't be super rare, but it can't be like common or it's shit. Yeah, it's, yeah, of course. It's right? such a like, balance, and then RuneScape has completely failed this balance. Lovely game, but recently, dude, that yeah. job has to be so cool. Like, I, I, know, I don't but know. Like, how do you get? How do you like? How do you say to tell someone it's like I am a gaming economist specialist? Right. You know? One sec, like, one sec. Yeah. One I sec. have these skills. You know, I like, thought this was the case, and I just double checked. So it, right. it's not specifically a gaming 
economist it's just a real world <laughs> economist so they yeah, basically yeah. just got some professionals in i assume people that go to like businesses and like figure oh, out like where their money are going and stuff yeah. and dude that must have been awesome like uh, right being hired to go because the thing is it's like to be honest with you it's like if you were hired and you were a specialist in economics and you're hired to come to a video game where there are no real bad slash real life repercussions for your yeah. analysis being <laughs> being wrong, like you could have just had a total laugh about it and just being like, yeah, just chuck a 2% tax on. I doubt that's what happened because they <laughs> no, were paid. But, but, but like yeah, that's, yeah. that's the interesting. The stakes are pretty low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, like, no, exactly. No, no one's homeless at the end of the day mm, if this fails, you know? Just, just to delve a little deeper, and then I want to jump on over to Flip in here with my question on this topic, but... Like, so say the world continues and gaming keeps just growing and growing. I think the job title of a game economist might become a real thing to the point where... Uh, Brandon like, knows at least, yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who knows, man? But that's a little too deep off topic. Flip it. I got to ask you, man. If you were the RuneScape economist or whatever... Econ How would you say it, Rakesy? Oh, don't ask me to say it again, bro. <laughs> I'm amazed I said it right the first time. Economist? No, I've lost it. I've lost it, bro. Economist. Economist. Yes! Yo okay, nice. yo, so, Flippin, what would you do if you were the uh, RuneScape economist? Is there anything you would change? Well, like about the economy generally or about the blog? That's Just like you take a gander and you're like, what could I do to fix it? Not, we could talk about the blog too, but just something where you just eyeball RuneScape and go, I could see a couple things I could do here. Well, I honestly probably would put in the Grand Exchange tax, t to be fair. Like, um, right now there's just nothing that takes items out of the game there's very few things that take gold out of the game like they even highlighted in the blog like our gold sinks are going through the alcrid gate which is like absolutely nothing when you think of how much gold goes through the the grand exchange yeah um also we're going to be losing at one of the biggest gold sinks in the dual arena that's going to be gone in like i don't know six months or whatever and that alone i think was sinking 20 or 30 bill a day Damn. so yeah i mean i think we kind of do need to tax honestly uh, and the only way to really have an effective item sink or gold sink is to have it be somewhat general. Because, like, there are obviously item sinks, but, you know, you can only have so many Kraken tentacles or dragon axes. Like, you can't just do that for every item because that would be kind of stupid. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, I yeah. think the tax is a good idea. <laughs> There's nothing you yeah. would change overall? Like, I know it's a pretty vague question, right? It's hard to, I like, just... But no, you, no, you look at a lot of item prices, mm -hmm. like, every day. And you see them fall and drop and like there's nothing that you could pinpoint that would make the game just a smidge better run a little better i mean Maybe like a the, tax on gargoyles or something i don't know <laughs> God, the, death, the death mechanics obviously would be ideal if they're a little okay. more punishing i know the reason why that that can't obviously be the case necessarily because ddosing or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah death yeah, death would be the most logical way to do it <laughs> Agree, you, you know, in, even in R three, right? Like, punishments in that game is way, way crazier. Like, sometimes you gotta pay like 10, 20 mil, like if you die and shit. So, I mean, that's for like end, end, end game players, but that's just an example. Yeah, because yeah. right, even, sure even death nowadays, bad. you just don't. You you can die, but like you just yeah. you're not really gonna lose that much. Like it's almost impossible. Yeah, you don't feel it. You really don't feel it. <laughs> yeah, it's only more have annoying because you gotta yeah. repair stuff sometimes. I wish they just took the money straight out or there was a coffer, you know, and it's like, okay, you take that money out there and now I don't got to go do all this dumb stuff. You still make all your money, you know, because it's definitely not a big, just an annoyance, the dev tax. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. We prepared but this, a few questions though. Yeah. yeah, we should probably jump into those, man. So mm -hmm. I, li I like this question a lot, man. Is 2% too high or too low? What do you, what do you think flipping for the tax? I mean, I personally think it's in the ballpark of being right. Like some people have suggested like a five or ten percent tax, which personally I think is like way too high. Uh if I was to give an exact number, I would do like 0.5 to 1% personally. Um, and that's just because I think if you tax the Grand Exchange too much, it'll lower the volume of trades by a really significant amount. So like current <clears throat> I think Right now, there's like 3 trillion GP that goes through the Grand Exchange every day, roughly, based on this Reddit post I totally stole. <laughs> um, yeah. So that 
equates to around 60 billion if you t did a 2% tax. Um, if you did a 10% tax, oh great, now it's uh, 300 billion, but that wouldn't be 300 billion because people wouldn't trade nearly as much. Yeah. So you have to get like the proper amount. Ideally, nothing would change. You would tax whatever amount people would feel comfortable with and everyone would use the Grand Exchange still. But that probably is not going to be the case. I think with 2% at least. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm actually quite surprised as somebody as yourself who's a flipper and that's mostly what you do in the game, that you're actually pretty chill with the 2% tax coming in. So uh, mm -hmm. I take my hat off to you for that. <laughs> so Thanks. my question is, with this 2% tax, I, I know 2% doesn't sound like a huge deal, but to put that into um, perspective for the audience that are listening, if you sell an item for one bill, 2% of that is going to be 40 mil. Okay, so that's the kind of money that we're talking about. Now, as somebody who primarily flips in this game, what do you think that this update is going to do to other people in the game who simply just flip? Do you think this is going to be something that slowly kills off flipping? Or do you think that people are going to continue doing so, but there's just going to be smaller margins? Uh, like, how, how do you predict what's going to happen from this update? Um, I think regardless of the tax they go with, it won't kill flipping because at worst, people will just not use the Grand Exchange like they did before it was a thing. 2% um, could. Like, there's a possibility that the margin will just grow to be 2% and you'll just have much larger margins and people won't trade nearly as much, but you can still flip successfully. Uh, or it might kill it off entirely and, you know, we'll have have to do it like person to person or Zybez or whatever. <laughs> uh, but to some extent, I think it will still exist. Um, but it'll definitely be impacted. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Okay. Rachie, to um, answer that question, a uh, devil advocate uh, perspective there, I think the tax might actually benefit flippers, at least certain items, right? Because some items are getting bought out, making those items more rare and items will go up. So maybe not even flippers, but just like uh, swing traders almost, if you're mm -hmm. just holding on an item. That item's going to be constantly taken out at a small supply over time. Hopefully, those bots aren't bringing it back. So it could benefit traders. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right now, margins are so thin. Like, it just anything you buy now, there's just, like, almost no margin because so many people do it. There's bots as well now. So, like, <laughs> yeah, the active trip, active flipping is already just not nearly as good as it used to be. So it could actually get better. I agree. It could potentially actually make the like barrier to entry a lot higher, which yeah. in them would make it easier. This is actually going to make the market, I predict maybe a very strange place because the way that this whole tax system they've spoken about in the blog will work is that the seller is the person who loses the 2%. The person who's buying mm -hmm. the item doesn't have to pay extra 2%, so the seller loses. Now, it's just come to my, my mind like, People that are flipping could be buying, say, you buy Bandos Tacits, you don't pay the extra 2%, and then if they still want to flip and make a big profit on that margin, what they could do is they could just sell it like the olden days and be like, selling Bandos Tacits, sell it for maybe 50k less than the grand exchange price, and they're going to make a profit because they avoid the tax, which leads me on to an important observation, I would say, and something that people have said to me so much in my Twitch chat is... Is this going to bring back a lot of scammers? Are people going to be getting scammed left, right, and center through doing in game trades? And I just want to push that forward to you guys. Like, what do you guys think? I mean, I think people will definitely get scammed if, if person to person trading becomes a thing again. I mean, there's no way to stop people being stupid. Or, I mean, some people are legitimately fall for pretty clever things too. But is it like a twisted bow, for example, even with 2%, that's. 20 20 mil like is who people is it, are willing to do i said Sorry. 40 mil tonight yeah, yeah it is 20 did. mil isn't it it is At that 20 point, mil it's a lot of money yeah know? it's a lot of money and like Sorry. even unless you i think the only people who would be okay with that is someone who just got it as a drop and doesn't just wants to sell it immediately yeah. or someone who's buying it and selling it like constantly like you're you're going to do it between people and then you can just get scammed but yeah. it's kind of your own personal responsibility not to get scammed but i think it will happen 
Yeah, um, once, yeah. once you get scammed once, hey, that's okay. But if you fall for the same thing again, yeah. maybe you shouldn't be trading, right? And every, yo, Rexy, I just gonna say, every time you take a swig of that water, I think it's a vodka <laughs> bottle, and I'm just like, dude, is this man getting trashed over here? <laughs> it, it's not a sponsor, but I'm surprised none of you, dude. My my, fr dude, I filled this up with my water bottle the other day. It's like two liters. It's a Ribena bottle. It's like the best thing ever. I really like. It. I feel fat. I feel like a king drinking out of like a wine, <laughs> like like a a wine thing, like a golden. A got yeah. Uh, if I may, do you guys think that what I said regarding flippers buying items from the Grand Exchange and then selling them in the open market in trade versus trade to player? Do you think that will and may happen, or do you think that hmm. probably not? Um, I I, th I don't think it will happen much. Like I think I think obviously people that are just kind of like. Playing the game, not focusing too much on the whole flipping aspect. What's going to happen is if they get a really, really expensive item like a Tebow, then they might try to sell it to a to a person, right? But but things that are like in you know ten mil, twenty mil, I don't think I don't think people are really going to care enough to go out of their way to do that, right? So I think generally speaking, how people sell items will stay the same, except for the you know occasional people want to selling a Tebow, you know, or like a scythe, maybe you know they might want to try to do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, person to person, but I think people that are experienced merchers, though, I, I don't, I don't think they're gonna spend that much time doing the whole person to person because it's it's gonna take too much time, you know, to yeah legitimately do that. Whereas you can just keep flipping the the coffers over and over again. I, I'll know? tell you what, man. Like, but, it, if this yeah. were to relight the community to sort of like all gather Emerald three hundred two at the Grand Exchange and people to be more interactive with each other, like. I don't know if I'd necessarily see that as a bad thing. I, I think yeah. that'd be quite a warm welcome to see again. I just, I, I think it would come with its own set of problems, like scamming specifically. But um, yeah, I just don't know. think 2% is big enough to like bring that kind of, you know, activity back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, kind of to answer the question Rakesy had, uh, something I was thinking about yesterday is there could very well be a market price and a grand exchange price. Um, so let's say, a twist to is a bill, even though it's not anymore. Or an Elijah, let's say an Elijah. Um, market price between players might be a bill, but the Grand Exchange might be a one bill in 10 mil or something. So technically, even though the, the tax is levied against the seller, if the seller sells it for one, 110, they lose 20 mil, they've effectively got 990 mil, and the buyer will have paid 110 bill. So they kind of split the difference. So you might yeah. not be able to exactly flip from the Grand Exchange to a person because you might actually have to pay more just because for the convenience. Yeah. Yeah. You lose a lot of time, like person-to-person like, <laughs> -person trading versus the GE. That's, Definitely. That's, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Well, that, that, that's kind of like the thing with... I, I feel like there's been a whole debate, right, with whether this should happen or not. There are people that say that there shouldn't be a tax on it because it's never been taxed. But like, I feel like a good example and a way to like really look at the Grand Exchange, right, is like, it is effectively a service where it will take your item and it will not just show it to the 2,000 people that are maximum uh, in your world at any time. It will show it to the entire game, okay? It will show your item to the entire game. Anybody can buy it from any world and there is absolutely no fee for listing it or taking it back down. Now... If you try and find a service like that in real life, I feel like probably one of the most popular ones that we all know of is like eBay. It's like eBay basically provides a similar service with less like amazing pros to it and they charge a fee. And I feel like like 2% for that service for what the Grand Exchange is actually doing in terms of saving your time. You don't have to stand in the Grand Exchange, follow or park, the bank and advertise selling it and just get lucky enough to find someone to buy it. It's like, is a huge service and mm. I, I personally think like regardless of the game's longevity and integrity and like the lifespan of it it's like the service itself is worth that two percent like the fact that this will hopefully mean that runescape has a more longevity to it is like it's like the cherry on top of the cake you know what i mean yeah i think a lot of people uh have a bit of nostalgia for like person-to-person -person trading Faldor, but I think if it actually came to it, people would find it kind of annoying. I think yeah. like people would pay a significant fee to have that kind of service. Yeah, yeah. yeah GE I'm should have a fee. Not. I mean, it just yeah. feels just like Rixie's um, 
comparison to eBay. And also when you were asking that question that if it would actually bring activity to person to person trade with this tax, I think rice is kind of on the money there where higher items probably definitely because they're already taken off the market in general and then people to people traded. But plus that 2% on like a bill item. Oh yeah. They're going to be coming out there. Um, I would love to see world 302 or F I doubt Falador, right? But the no, Varag no. area it's not yep. it's too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I would love to see that uh, player to player. Cause I feel like uh, when I'm playing this game, there's just a part of it I'm missing. And that's not just PVP, mm. but also the player interaction, you know, the yeah. bank standing, bank yeah. sales, I trading. I, mean, I think it'd be the, nice. Yeah. Like per the personally, idea that you get a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> personally, I've done a lot of merching, like, you know, in, in the past and stuff. And like, and like, I want to bring back Maple Sword because it was a good example of, of how trading and getting tax was a, a thing, right? And it was a very, back in its heyday, it was an incredibly like bustling, like commercial thing where people would trade all the time and you would get taxed, right? And, and like, I think what's going to happen is for people, you know, getting to merching after this update is that it's going to be a bit harder just because now they have a bit more risk involved. But it's still not gonna like necessarily stop people from from learning it, right? Or merching whatsoever, because even in a game like Maple Story, where the tax was crazy, it was like it used to be like one percent, ten percent, or something like that, depending on how much it was. And people still would merch like as if it's normal. You just kind of just get used to it, and you kind of forget that it was a, like a new thing. It's just it's there now, you know, something yeah. you get used to. But that yeah, they'll they'll probably still merch in the GE as as normal, just you know. Hard to say whether or not the profit's gonna be bigger. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think it brings to another good question though. It's because now, right? It's um, it's not every item that is getting deleted. It's only certain items that are getting deleted, which is really weird because there's gonna be so much bias involved. Like if you, like Jagex has to decide what items they're gonna delete, right? But like, but like, how they sh how should they decide what to delete, right? Like based on what variables, right? Because yeah, it, um, I feel like that's that, that that's a very uh, controversial topic that you know we could talk about right now. Yeah. Uh, before we do, real quick, I'll I'll quickly read out the items that they've listed thus far, and they have also said that they're open to suggestions for uh, more items to be added. <laughs> so at the moment, they yeah. have Spectral and Arcane Shields, Nightmare Staff and Orbs, Twisted Bow, Outer Maul, Kodai Insignia, Din's Bulwark. Is Yo, I'm rich. Oh, no right. way. You're Yo, <laughs> best long-term play in RuneScape ever. Sorry, best right. long -term no scrolls, Elijah, no. <laughs> uh, God swords, Armado armor, Bandos armor, Sourdome and swords, Amarok spear, Abyssal bludgeon, Kraken tentacle, Trident, Dark bow, Smoke battle staff, Occult neck, Does toxic blowpipe, and I actually did tweet out when they um, posted the blog post. I think that seeing the Inquisitor armor on there would be really nice. I don't know yeah. if you guys have seen the price of Inquisitor armor, but like, take it from what? me, somebody who farms that boss. That boss is horrible to kill. It's incredibly rare to get it. Reno's as well. And it's so cheap right now. And I think a big reason for that is because there are a lot of bots that are farming it. Um... I, I feel like that should wild. definitely be added onto this list. Yeah. So, and also to anyone watching the uh, podcast right now on the YouTube comments, let us know if there's anything you'd like to see added on there. Maybe like Dragon Chain Body. I don't know. Maybe they could remove a couple of those. Who knows? Dragon Plates yeah. too. Might as well. Oh, my! Like, like here's a here's a question, right? It's like, should it be selective or should it be everything? Like everything, everything, you know? everything dude. I think right? in my weird. brain, Rice, I, I think that there's certain ways they should do it right maybe they should yeah. break down items in between um like you got armor and weapons and then you got supplies that also get out of the game just from using them like wood and stuff maybe they're not burned as much or maybe hell they're burned even more i don't know but to kind of have a nice separate thing because it's not so much that we have too much food in the game which is a little bit right but it's more so those higher end items that need to be burned so maybe anything that falls under the category of like armor weapons amulets glories you, rings you know and like then actual equipment yeah. yeah and then to keep the food not super expensive because no one really wants to you know we want a sarah to cost money but we don't want to be poor trying to get 10 of them in our inventory to go deep yeah. wild right so mm -hmm. nice little balance man it should be yeah. more expensive it should be more expensive yeah like expansive over like you know item types like oh how much for armor how much for gear, uh, you know, weapons, right? Things like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think they should definitely expand the list a bit because, like, it's kind of weird having raid one items on there, but not raid two. 
Um, obviously, there's so many items you could put on there, and like it would be kind of nice if they could sync every item. But at the same time, if every item has an item sync, then are you really syncing any items? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like they need a rule. Out. I feel like yeah. they need some rules on this because they I, they they can't just be like, all right, guys, next month we're gonna put this item in the list now. Like, you mm-hmm. know what? Yeah, I, I kind feel of like feel like should they should keep it private. Maybe I don't know. Like, obviously, they have to make the decision. And it's already kind of a bit of a controversy yeah. just having them decide. But at the yeah, same exactly. time, it's making it nice. public information is like, right? Whoa. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like it because it's easy mercy. <laughs> <but, laughs> that's what I was yeah. gonna say. Think about yeah, it, guys. Yeah. Like. And do we know these are going to definitely go through, or are we going to be voting on them, or how's this blog? Um, yeah, so, I, yeah, it's so weird that like they're telling us what they're going to like, you know, delete, right? Like, yeah. So mm. what they've effectively said is yeah. they've said that this is because it's game integrity. This is yeah, going to yeah. This isn't mm. going to be polled, which fair play, Jagex. Uh, but the whole list of wow. items that are going to be used to be taken out of the game is up for discussion. So I imagine okay. there's mm. going to be like an open dialogue where we can add things to that. And I will say as like a rule, and I'm, I'm sure this is pretty obvious, but like for the gold sink, they shouldn't include anything that you can buy from any trader in the game. So for example, dragon yeah. battle axe, like what's the point in having yeah, less no, of those? They're already out They're already out yeah. Yeah, no. yeah like, already out value. Anything matter. like that, you, it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, I feel like there's so much that should be on this list. And I think what you just it's said- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like Dragon Warhammer is like twenty four mil. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so cheap. It's insane. But like, that's a good question. You said like, should they let us know what the items are going to be? Because it definitely like gives well, people the incentive to go and buy all of these items. Yeah. If anybody watching this goes and checks the price of any of these items on this list, they have skyrocketed in the last few yeah. days. Every so, single so, one of them. So here's the double whammy, right? They have to tell us what items they're going to do because otherwise. It's going to be basically insider manipulation kind of deal, you know? Right. Yeah, I think that's right. why they made it public information, but it almost feels like JX is like yeah, a big merch client at this point. They've, yeah, they like, can't, they, they don't have a choice, you know? Like, it almost no feels like someone does inside trading, though, with some of these posts. Yeah. You'll see these sky- items skyrocket the instant it gets blocked, and you're like, bro, there's no way yeah. someone I, had I, all this stocked. Like, cabbage shields? <laughs> what is yeah. going on there, bro? I mean, um, yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, this reminds me, I don't know, flipping old school, if you played back in pre-OC uh, very much, but, like, this reminds me in some ways of, like, do you remember when they just made it so climbing boots went from being 12 gold pieces to, like, 75k or something like that? Yeah, it and was like, you, yeah. Well, it was something crazy like that, and, like, it just, it kind of reminds me of that in a way. I, I, just, it, yeah. I remember, I remember that post and uh, I remember seeing a screenshot of some guy that was a pure who had like a huge stockpile of climbing boots because all he did was, uh, he did members warring and he had like 10,000 climbing boots and overnight he yeah, became like guy. a billionaire, like just for having these climbing boots on his account. But it's insane. Yo, I still think to this day, Jagex gets anxiety whenever they change like an alk value at all. Just because that's what they did. They just put it up to 75k for no reason. Even though they, they should. that much. They should get anxiety, <laughs> bro. Yeah, they should. <laughs> mm. I, th- I think the best way they could go about this in the future is just set a standard of how they're, they're like, like what classifies mm-hmm. as items that should be synced and by how much, right? Like, because right now, if they're going to do it this way, I, I just don't see, I just don't see it being, being sustainable because it's so nitpicky. You know, mm. right? I feel like if they just say things like, if they just kind of set a rule where it's like items from boss, like unique equipment that you just can't get from stores, right? Like clue scroll mm. stuff, um, boss unique drops, you know, uh, boss weapons or boss unique armor, right? Like I feel like if they set some sort of standard, then going forward, it's it's understood that like, okay, well, you know, all these will eventually get bought out at 2%. You know, once once there's enough of that money held up in the GE, it'll get bought out, right? Because no, like yeah. right now, it's so weird. Because like I, I just don't see how how this this is gonna make sense in the future. Because because then eventually, people are gonna be like complaining. Oh, of course, you know, like deck scrolls are always gonna get bought out or whatever. But like, why not this and why not that? Yeah. You know, like it it, it feels it's like not... a pretty arbitrary decision and it's like yeah, exactly. kind of artificial. But yeah, I, exactly. I don't know, is there a better solution that's like this? broad that they could apply i'm not really yeah, sure i feel like if they were to set a standard for like future yeah, yeah some kind of metrics then, it feels yeah, like the I'm, framework I'm like, to the biggest runescape bull run of all time right yeah because think just so. think about it runescape's literally giving you a chart of items that you could buy right now that are 
almost for sure going to be the format of things that are going to skyrocket. Yeah. And now they're talking about increasing the list of items they're going to be taking out of the game by implementing a gold tax that will also affect all the items in the game. So if you are <laughs> yeah. looking at getting into trading and you watch Flipping Old School's channel, this is the perfect time. I'm getting so bullish right now mm -hmm. on just, uh, really just how many things actually went up. Like even the probably. scythe, even though it's not on this list, like jumped up pretty much any item that people thought would be added. Uh, yeah. just like skyrocketed anyway. And they're yeah, going to increase yeah. the list. There's no way they're not, right? There's so oh, many yeah, items. Armadillo God Swords, like everything needs to be put on yeah. that list that is constantly yeah. bombarded. And then gold... Personally, if they had a rule. Yeah. Better. I, I think an angle to try and bear in mind here that we haven't discussed is like from Jagex's point of view, they might be seeing this as like, we don't care who individually makes a killing off of this. What we care about is the longevity of the game yeah. and also having a healthy economy. Like That's probably the stance that they're holding right now. Mm. But it is interesting because they did mention when they were talking about removing items from the game once the tax had been hit to pay out that item, um, that they were basically going to... They were in... They were going to be able to basically manually select the items that were getting removed. So if there were too many tasks that had been removed, they'd stop that and like move on to the well, abyssal dungeon and see, stuff like that. See, here's the problem: right? what is too many, right? Well, yeah, yeah. that's, that's well, kind well, of like the issue. It, it, I, that's why I'm trying to address is the issue of how they're doing assume, it. So I would assume it's also what they mentioned uh, regarding the surplus of items. They basically touched on it, saying about how if there's too many items and there's not enough people that need that item you know the value goes down like they mm -hmm. basically give a basic yeah. economics lesson there yeah. so but i i imagine like if they were to run with it like this they would look at it like that and they obviously have the data on how many dragon warhammers are in the game how many players use them and so forth so maybe yeah that's how they do it i don't I know i think but like this the, the issue still is how much is too much and how much is too little right there's no there is no law that tells us what is too much and what is too many. That's just our individual, you know, perspective, right? That's why I'm saying that's. I think that's the weakness of how they're doing it. Is because, because sometimes they might they might say, oh, this is fine, but then what if the players don't think that's fine, right? And then they move on to something else instead, right? I'm saying I think there's a huge flaw in how they're doing it. It's because because there is no fundamental law that tells you what is too much and what is too little, right? I feel yeah, like yeah, if they just messy had, like because you have to figure out how what items to choose, how many are being removed, and I'm sure exactly. they're gonna like change and those that all an item. Yeah, and then what price should these items be? Like, there's no real answer to that. Most yeah. people just say more, but like, how much should an occult be worth? I think five mil maybe or more. I don't know. Like, it, yeah, it's exactly. pretty. Who has the answer to that? Right. I'm gonna buy so, some occults. <laughs> that's why I think an arbitrary rule is better. Like just you know, just just a standard two percent mm. on like a unique boss drops or standard one yeah. percent on unique weapons because that way it's more you know what you're getting right. And there's no like nitpicky like because right now it's so nitpicky you could always be like yo jackets is corrupt. They just don't like deck scrolls being this much. You know Dude, so I, they're gonna keep taxing it. You know like think, or whatever. Right? I think this so. is like a standard issue of like oversharing like where Jagex yeah do sometimes be a little bit too transparent on these issues but like well no they have to on this case in this case they have to though you know do, you, do any of you guys have like a frame of reference to like another video game or something like that where this is done and it's done properly no <laughs> no this is no. very unique this is very unique okay all right <laughs> but no, i think one thing's for not. sure one thing's for sure is that the the way they're doing it is too arbitrary and there's no there's no rule which is bad because I feel like everyone needs to be kind of like on the same mindset, right? Of how this is going to work, right? Because like right now it's just Jagged choosing whenever and however, which is yeah. not, yeah. I don't think that's good. Like in the long And the fact that, that they're asking for like weak. community feedback weak. here is good. But at the same time, it's like, what's the most popular yeah. Reddit post that doesn't necessarily mean what should be added. Or like, mm -hmm. you know, people have yeah. some vested interests and maybe like put in the Torreg's hammer on here or something like yeah. yeah, I think I think the idea I isn't. That. Yeah, the idea isn't even to have like a perfect solution. I think the idea is to have a solution where everybody understands that this is between the you know the 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 creators and the players. It's even playing field, right? They just haven't said anything that that tells us that Jagex is playing it fair with the players because it's just Jagex completely arbitrarily picking whatever, right? Right. Which they should set a rule where they're gonna abide by it, and we all understand we're gonna play by it, right? That's what I'm trying to get at is that 
It's not. Yeah, a, it's I, not an even, even feel. You know how they're I do, doing it. Right? I do understand what you're saying. So. I, I'm trying to make sense of this myself, but like, do yeah. do you have like a proper suggestion, Re? Well, yeah. What what were you mentioned with Min? I thought Min had a great idea. How he was saying like a blanket rule for um unique armor, right? From mobs, a blanket rule for unique weapons for mobs, right? That kind of deal. Yeah. Like, let's say could... yeah, all armors from bosses or slayer mobs or whatever, two percent. Like all items from clue scrolls or whatever, one percent. You know what I mean? Just set something that is gonna keep applying the whole time, right? Yeah. Rather than Jagus be like, ah, we're changing it to this item now, and we're removing this item now from the deletion. Yeah, I don't think mm -hmm. I think that's way better than whatever right. it is. I, I, I'm totally on board with your way of thinking there. I got you. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that I, that I thought Mint's idea was great. Yeah, that's, that's I, a solid I, idea. I think the next yeah, step too that? is because. Um, I mean, you got a really good point, Rice. It's not fair what they're doing, but I do yeah. think, like I said earlier, it's the start of the biggest bull run in RuneScape history. Man. <laughs> yeah, Everything yeah, is going to just skyrocket. They're taking gold out of the economy, and they're they're definitely going to come to the point where everyone's going to tell them that same thing you just said, and then yep. they're either going to come to like a solution of, yeah, we got to categorize these items, and then every item in this class gets taxed accordingly, or they're just going to spread the list out to everything right that needs mm -hmm. to be coming out of the game and i mean what what is runescape talking about right now what is jagex talking about right now taking items out of the game making gold more uh more spendy what is it called it just it's it costs more is that a word it's just more valuable i guess yeah, gold yeah, more yeah. valuable There's, and then yep. to take items out of the game that's exactly what we want them to talk about, man. This whole year, RuneScape items have been falling out of the sky, and they're finally starting to come with G taxes, item burns. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited really to good. see what happens, regardless of whether it's good <laughs> yeah. or bad. I'm like, I'm just like, whew, you're content. kind of like at the center of the YouTube right now, <laughs> yeah. circle for this, you know? Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I never thought an update would be my niche. As, I don't as right. that. <laughs> it just makes like, the game exciting, though, man. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, what could happen? You. To yeah, the economy. I, mean, I know bulwarks getting burned. I mean, how lucky can a man be over here? I didn't know that was gonna happen. Yeah. Oh, I'm just glad they're getting taken out the game. I don't even care if I got some. Get those demon shields out the wild, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, on top of that, you gotta think like this combined with you know updates coming like raids free next. It, it's like there's always a knock on effect. It's like when content comes out like whatever is used to do that content so we're talking like all the gear which is listed here and more it, it's like that combined with this update like i wonder what it's this is five. gonna do yeah it's yeah. gonna like i wonder if this is gonna be really impactful or if we're barely gonna notice a difference like i think like, i think psychologically something new will happen is that people will be less like less um chaotic about their their like trading you know because like every time you sell something now, right, you 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 lose money a bit, right? So I feel like people are gonna be more more happy to hold on to their things rather than like sell things as much. I think I yeah. think I think people aren't gonna buy something for like a slayer task anymore, I don't think. Like yeah, no, I'm not gonna buy yeah. Kodai for 80 mil if I'm gonna lose like a mil on it just for using it. Oh, yeah, such exactly. a good point people are going to start keeping <laughs> their items now making yeah. it more scarce on the market which will probably drive prices bull run yeah. bro we're all rich they're gonna baby be, there are going to be so many less trades regardless because like yeah, flipping like smaller if, that, trades if there's a huge volume of people who are just flippers and then yeah people who temporarily have items aren't going to want to just cycle through those really quickly yeah. so really people who are yeah. just buying it to keep are going to be the main ones or people who got it as a drop and just want to dump, dump, dump it kind of yeah. That's I think really, it's kind of really good. good. I think it's kind of good in a way. I, I think one of the worst things so far, when it comes to kind of like how you know the the non Ironman uh, environment ha has been lately, is that you know like when I when I stream and I hear people, whenever there's a new update, right? There's always these people that are like, "Should I sell my stuff?" You know, like just <laughs> oh, because yeah, of an update, so right? <laughs> right. And I'm just like, you know, rather than selling something just because you see an update why don't you sell something when you need the money to buy something yeah. right like wouldn't yeah. that make things so much easier for your life like why why but, but obviously you know you know why people are they kind of treat this game like real life you know they're like oh no <laughs> the value of this is not there anymore i should sell it before i lose more value right it's it's like they treat it too much like real life and i feel like maybe with some taxing it'll kind of keep them from having this itch you know itch every time yeah. an update comes out they're just gonna sell everything i feel like in in a way, right? It's like 
you're you're the you're the cause of of your of your own problems in this case. It's because think about it, right? The more you panic sell an item, the more you're contributing to the price of it going down, right? Yeah. Like in those cases. So I feel like you know maybe some taxes could help people. Yeah, chill. I think like disincentivizing it a bit would just be good for yeah. the mental a bit. Like even if yeah, like I want to do a like Hydra for example. Like if I can just easily turn around and sell the twisted bow back. I'm not going to do Hydra very long if I get tired. But if I'm stuck with this thing, I'm going to do it. And yeah. like, it just takes a little bit of that out of the equation, which I think could be nice, actually. <laughs> yeah, a little stress I mean, is another factor, but it's more stable, it's, though. You know, It's definitely going to be interesting because like, you raised a really good point a minute ago about people buying a Kodai for like a Slayer task to burst or whatever, and then like intending to sell it back and then continue on with their way, like maybe rebuying a Sarah God Sword and full Bandos or whatever. And like, that's something which you do when you're like progressing an account up if you're trying to make money through pvm a lot of the time you make sacrifices by selling like your full bandos and sgs to be able to buy like a singular thing whether it be like a dragon crossbow or dragon hunter crossbow <laughs> Kodai saying. wand or something like that like it's gonna actually change and impact the game on that level as well and that's gonna be really interesting like it this might be one of the single biggest updates in terms of like changing an impact in the way that players culture. approach this game. The because culture is going to change a bit. Like you're not going to buy a Kodai and use it for one task and then lose two mil. Do you know what I mean? It's just not worth it. So it'd be mm -hmm. really interesting to see what happens from that. So that's why I think that the actual percent tax is so important. Like if you could still capture those people, say like it's 0.5 percent or something, um, and that removes. 500k. I think I would still sell, buy and sell a Kodai for 500k. Maybe not for like one task, but you know, I would probably still do it. So what's going to be more effective, taxing pretty much everyone at 0.5% or way less at 2%? It's kind of hard to know what exact perfect number. And I'm sure they might change it a bunch, honestly. Yeah. I think at 2%, um, I think at 2%, people are going to start holding on to their more expensive items. Yeah, sure. I think so too, definitely. Yeah, they're going to hold on to it. They're going to try to make commitments to to make it last a while, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but I think that's what it was like before, though. In a way, you know, before trading was so convenient, though people used to kind of like plan out things better, like long term, rather than just mm -hmm. ah, this one thing I buy for that and I sell it again, you know, in an hour. Here's a yeah. question: Do you think that this is going to discourage or make it harder and put people off that are brand new to the game? And like, also, is there like a tax value like minimum trade like if you sell a chef hat for 10 gp do you lose two percent on that or <laughs> no. like i think it's the minimum of 100 is what aiza said is that 100k uh, or 100 gold i got 100 gold like it because it can't ah, physically that, at two percent well it, it shouldn't yeah. affect the beginner players because you know all all the items from you know they listed obviously are high level items but even if they were to standardize it like we mentioned with mint about like creating a tax brackets for certain types of gear, they're all going to be things that are of, of a higher level, you know, scale anyways. Like, so I, I don't think it'll affect the low level players much. It'll affect them more when they enter med game, you know, eventually high level. But that mm -hmm. that's everybody's playing field. You know, if you made it that deep, I'm sure you'll be okay. Yeah. But then, yeah. you know. So. Okay. Yeah. All also right. in the beginning, I think a lot of people are buying items more so. So like you're just going to be buying tons of gear, which wouldn't be taxed as much. And also everything is just so cheap anyway. Yeah. I don't know if it'll like disincentivize too much, but they could also just make some kind of like tax breaks on, I don't know, chef hats or tools <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I don't, like, no, I don't think chef hats will ever be in that bracket, you know? Even yeah. if they, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, they could stop <laughs> dropping one day. I got like five now. I don't know. Yeah. Um, also, a nice little comparison, man, on the, uh, the trading post versus the Grand Exchange on New World is when you make a sale on New World, you can put your offer up for... A day, two days, seven days, or 14 days. And the longer your offer is up, the higher the trading fee slash tax is. Now, oh, would that oh be God. good for RuneScape? Say you're trying to do a quick flip, but you don't Damn. want to have it there. You could do a very small tax if it's a day. But say if you have just an, an enormous amount of things being sold over time, and you want to do like 14 day a month hold on the Grand Exchange. Wait, maybe. can you take it out freely though? Whenever? No, like, no. You, once it goes in... You know, you got you. That's that's the part yeah, about being a trader, that, that's right? That's too wild, bro. That's too wild for me. <laughs> that wouldn't be good for me. 
<laughs> no, it definitely wouldn't be good for flippers because it would make it oh, harder. Oh my god! Make it I think harder. I think we take baby steps. Maybe Bro. start with this, and then you know, if it does nothing to recover the economy, maybe Jagex could think maybe we need to do the yeah. second step. No, like know? okay, so this all leads to the real question, right? Like, do you think this this will be enough? To change, like, to drastically increase the prices of items back to kind of like what people are used to two years ago, or or I mean, or can we talk about the other factors that they need to address, right? Like volume of things coming together. What what is causing the volume, right? Like, yeah. what what has why is the volume going up so much compared to two years ago, right? Right, like I've mentioned, like the idea that like maybe the gold farmers are getting better at PVMing, right? They're just not cutting trees anymore, and they just only yeah. want to do God Wars. Or, you know, the Runelite mod clients, they're just yeah. more advanced modding clients off of those. Do you, and they, do you and think they, they, they could implement a tax like that to where yeah. they could see the item volume volume coming in? And if it surpasses the average, a tax rises until it balances out? Like, would that... Also, you got like 20% taxes on Tassies or something because there's oh, just God. being modded, you know? But would that regulate the price, burn all the items coming in the game? I, I, that's... One, is I think that's going to cause more arbitrariness, though, just because... Yeah, just because, like, cool again, idea. we don't know what is too much and what's too little, right? Like, real real quick. No one can the, the what, really what say. Was, what was the tax on the Doodle Arena that they put in? Do it was know? 1%. It was 1%. less. Mm. Okay. Well, so tax I, the Doodle Arena, think... 2%. Tax the G, 1%. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that, like, with that in mm. mind, like, I, I'm, I'm just going to throw out here a bold statement, but I would assume there's more money flowing through the grand exchange than there is on the dual arena oh, on a day-to-day -day basis absolutely. um so with that in mind if the percentage is two percent on the um ge and one percent on the dual arena and even though they're getting rid of the dual arena so that's a lot of money which is just going to stay in the game who knows i i think it would like if they both remained definitely would be significant maybe with two percent on the ge it's like maybe it will be enough Maybe, yeah, like a, but like a couple of months ago, or at the beginning of the year, actually, or the beginning of last year. Oh my god, <laughs> um, yeah. they had like a data stream where they went over how much was removed from the dual arena from when they implemented it to the date of the data stream, and it worked out to be about 20, 20 bill a day, which I thought was insanely high mm. from the dual arena that was removed. Bro, people were shocked. I was shocked. Yeah, I obviously yeah. don't go there very much. Yeah, um, so it's crazy. So just times twenty bill times ninety nine. That's the daily amount. Of money being staked at the dual arena, pretty yeah, much. I think right? it was over a trillion when they they came up with the graphic, mm. um, and the grand exchange uh, has like three. I think at, during that same live stream they said six trillion. Um, so taxing two percent would be like, oh god, I shouldn't have got into the one hundred and sixty billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wait, damn. That's, <laughs> that's just gold right out the yeah. game, bro. And then you yeah. got item burns. Oh, what the fuck? yeah. I oh I think. Well, time will tell whether it's going to be enough, but I think it's a very good first step in the right direction. Is what mm -hmm. I, I think yeah, it's I, the most I, impactful I, thing you could do because what else can you do? I mean, yeah, I think the general consensus is that item prices are too low, and obviously we don't have like there's no law to tell us okay once it reaches a certain amount it's okay right? But like I think the general consensus is you know it needs to be higher. Almost everybody can agree with that that it needs to be higher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it will do that effect right is to get it higher, but. But at the same time, though, it's like, what if it it's, isn't high enough, right? And and to me, I think this is kind of like one initiative that Jagus is doing that's part of a bigger scheme of things, which is which is them understanding perhaps that the whole real world trading um, like community has just evolved so much that they're they're slacking, right? On on kind of mm -hmm. like, do you think that? Do you feel? Do you guys feel that? Uh, at least from all the people I've talked to. Uh, over the past year, whenever when it comes, you know, to uh, you know, um, GE and like botting stuff, I feel like they're all kind of connected together. You know, these past two years, like like Jagex, obviously, you know, they do their usual banning strats, but I feel like that wasn't enough the, for the past two years because like I've oh. seen advanced nightmare bots, I've seen so many like gold farmers at Gall Wars at TOB. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that before when I used to do TOB when it first came out. There were no go farmers. It was always legit players. Like when I did Sokano, always legit players. Um, when I did Nightmare, always legit players. Now it's like bots <laughs> doing Nightmare. Now, now there's go farmers doing all those bosses, right? I feel like these two years have, they've evolved so much, right? And, and they haven't been keeping up with them. And I think they are no. now. I think they're starting to realize that they are. 
because I now see, yeah. they're what increasing they're, they're hiring more people for anti-cheat they're like doing the whole ge tax to kind of like fix the supply you know the surplus that that's probably caused by the the advancement in the gold farming side right like do you guys think they're they're related because i'm feeling it's like yeah all part of the big picture here you know dude it, it feels like a piece of the puzzle for sure like yeah this this definitely feels like a safeguard for jagex and like i feel like another piece of the puzzle is something we speak about quite often which is the official runescape client right and yeah, it's I like i feel like all part of it it's sure. oh dude what's that what's that Yu Gi Oh card where it's like five pieces what's this exodia? Oh, bro. Yeah. exodia that's the one <laughs> this is the exodia safeguard of old school runescape yeah i think yeah. they're doing it all together because they realize finally like damn we we slacking you know like I, yeah and I, and I agree i feel like they've been slacking these past two years because otherwise these items would have never plummeted this hard you know yeah they haven't really so. been trying to add in anymore like gold sinks or item sinks for a long time like just now we have the g tax um the new update for next they have like an item sync with that as well so it seems like going forward they are trying to think of kind of like unique ideas of how to make this work but yeah i don't think they've done almost anything in the last couple of years yeah, oh. yeah. i mean I'm why happy are to humans see that you know? why are humans afraid of ai right the singularity <laughs> what are we seeing right now the runescape singularity where ai surpasses that. human intelligence bro i mean we got advanced Dude, it's what the it's, hell are those? <laughs> it's, it's getting there. I'll tell you this, man. The Dude, day those LMS one, bots, bro. Dude, the oh day an God. LMS bot whoops my ass for real, and I can't fight it back, will be the day that I'm like, "Yep, they've overtaken us." That day hasn't yeah. quite come. It yeah. hasn't. But you quite could come. see it. You garbage. could see it in the hills, bro. You could just see bro. their little bald head peeking over with their green shirts. They're coming, bro. bro when I first saw those Fosani bots, man, with their bludgeons and full obsidian, I, I was bracelets. Like, oh my days. <laughs> Good fight. Yeah. The but but, but that, that's that's the thing. <laughs> Something to like bear in mind is like killing hard mode for Sony is actually a challenge because even like myself and Ree, who've done hundreds of kills there, I'm you still messed up occasionally. Yeah. You know. I'm dead. But like, because it is a pre-skipted NPC that has a rotation of attacks, it, a bot knows that algorithm. Like they can program it so it knows where to step and when not to step, what to pray, what not to pray. It, I would say it is debatably easier for a bot to kill that boss than it is a human at this point, because humans make errors. And if a bot script's good, it ain't going to. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, but have you, something... have you seen the machine learning bots? Like the ones that uh, like play chess and stuff? Are they the, one, the ones that run? The ones that just learn over time and they can like learn bandos or they can just yeah. they can do anything yeah. after a while. I think. Those are super Yeah, cool. but that's like, you know, I, I guess we're at a point where we can talk about anything now, you know? We, we kind of covered this pretty in depth, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to we're start talking about space in a minute. Hey, yeah, do you like space? Yeah, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I like space. I like space. <laughs> Well, talking yeah, about those yeah, AI yeah. learning bots, man, what they do is they call them Taz bots for these um, charity tournaments they do on Twitch where they just pop a, a bot into a game, a little AI, and then it plays it 10, yeah. 20, 30,000 times, millions of times until it masters the game to where speedrunners who've been playing it their whole lives, can't. They, they're learning from it. They're like, oh, that exists? All right, let's add it there. Man, why couldn't that happen to RuneScape? Is that happening to RuneScape already? I mean their signs bro you know because for a long time right like people used to be like nah dude dude that's myths bro people like bots killing bosses and you know myths but like i see it now bro it's like in my face yeah they're, like all i mean they're like all over the place now dude it's crazy there's a I definite... think we need bots to counter bots we just need to yeah. get smarter bots like literally this year i got my ass whipped by lms bot going for a room pouch you know did you and yeah, I, yeah. yeah. oh dude those we guys need to are insane a bot to kill those bots Dude, they're insane. Dude. They do six way one takes and per switch yeah. at the same time. I'm just like, bro, Jeez. I'm not fighting the best player in the game. There's no way, you know? There, like, there's, there, no way. there's like, there's at least four LMS bots and they're all different. And the more LMS you do, there is the God tier one, which is the one you're referring to. Oh yeah, that guy was what, crazy. I, dude, I'm telling you, man, whenever I, I fight against, him. when I fight against the God tier one, it gives me a run for my money. I'm like, dude. I'm, I'm just fighting. I'm like, is this is this a bot I'm fighting or is this like some oh, fucking yeah. pro P care? And I'm just like, it's so hard to tell because they are that advanced. And then the yeah. other three are just like, if you haven't managed to defeat them yet, 
just barrage them DD and then just one tick your whip while you've got your staff on and they always miss the prey. The reason yeah, I'm done with the rune pouch now. Thank can you kind of like trick them by prayer, <laughs> prayer switching yeah. kind of? <laughs> yeah, you can do the arm staff yeah. trick for some of the low middle class bots. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, dude, something awesome a little while back, they weren't yeah. programmed to recognize the DH axe as a melee weapon. So I just sit there in full DH and just be like swinging my axe while they're praying to the <laughs> Stupid ass ball. Oh my God. Dude, you no, just dude. told him, bro. They're going to add that to the code now. It's over. Uh, yeah, well, to be fair, when I was doing this the past few days, there were more people HK, uh, HKing. Because like, yeah. you could tell, they would do six ways, but they were so bad with their prayer switches. And, and like they would misclick you all the time. They would DDS poke you all the time. But but still, they somehow would do six ways. every Like, perfect. You know? Yeah. That was so, yeah. I was like, I was like... That's not going to get you anywhere, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will say something that I think is interesting, right? Is that Jagex are actually taking these measures. Like, they're I'm happy. Hiring... I'm, I'm very happy to hear But, but it, it's an observation, right? Because yeah. typically big companies, and don't get it twisted, Jagex isn't an indie, indie company, it's a massive company. I've been to the offices of Jagex. I know how that place looks, dude. They have like a theater in the middle of their office. It's insane. They have a pub there. Um, for them to be taking actions and like hiring outside specialists, I guess, economic yeah. advice from experts, there's always a reason. And that reason for big businesses to do things like that is typically tied to losses. Okay. So if they deem it like it's like, okay, if we don't deal with this situation, we're going to lose this amount of money, right? They have to deal with it. If the botting situation, the economy wasn't as big a deal, right? It wouldn't matter. They recognize it now. They recognize it. Yeah. And I, I don't feel like that's just a case of them listening to the community. I, I think it's more than that. I think that they're actually seeing there is a genuine problem here. And I, I feel like it really is a race against the bots really and uh, the gold farmers yeah. at this point. It, it's like, if this doesn't get sorted out, it could very well be the downfall of RuneScape if they mm -hmm. don't sort this out. And it's about time they start. And I think that they're, they're making good steps towards it. I just hope they're not too late. And hopefully they're not. Yeah, yeah. it does feel like we're kind of like already off the cliff, you know? And mm. you're just kind of free falling. And maybe this kind of update where we're going to get our taxes and the economy We got our back parachute, and, baby. We you know, yeah, we're just, we're not up yet, but we're just, you're just falling a little slower. We're just slowly gliding down. Uh, but we're going to hit that bottom one day and who knows what the hell that's going to look yeah, like. Yeah, we just don't want to crash, you know? Nah, we're yeah, we're in a tree, get but, decapitated. Like, in every single game there is where there's some sort of, like, real-life incentive to make money, it doesn't matter if it's Maple Story, World of Warcraft, or EVE Online, there's always going to be people that exploit things to make money for themselves. And I just say they're opportunists, right? It is what it is. So it's like, there's a fine balance between there being just a few of them, and then having the game overran with them. And, like, the sad reality mm. is, like, Eventually, if the bots and the rural traders and the gold farmers win, they're going to push all of the legitimate players out of the game, in turn, kill their killing, <laughs> killing their own job off. So it's like, yeah. you know, it needs, it needs to be that balance. Like, it's okay mm. to I have a wonder few. I why, wonder why old school is so much worse than other games. Like, is it because the game is so easy to, like, run on computers or, like, a random laptop? Like, why is old school so botted? I mean, I'm sure other games are, but... Well, there's um, a couple of reasons. We actually had uh, the people who were making those clients, Con, do it, RuneLight, all those guys on. And um, when RuneLight first kind of came out, uh, Rice could probably explain it better, but it was open, right? The... Uh, the open script? source, yeah. Open, open source, source, yeah. yeah. The code was so available. So mm -hmm. people can go onto the code and open source on RuneLight and just start botting with all their functionality. And they closed it now, but... Rice likes it's to see it open <laughs> Pandora's box. They really did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this com this also added on to the fact that people find RuneScape Gold incredibly valuable. I mean, I don't know why, but they, they can't get enough of it. It's just, you know, you got open source. You so with, right, right. Yeah, you, yeah. You know how crazy the psychology is that people want to cheat so bad just to just to lie to their friends that they're good at the game, you know? <laughs> like seriously yeah. how crazy is that psychology bro like this game with yeah. shitty Account graphics services doesn't make sense to me yeah uh, it, uh, why, so why iron man especially like what why, yeah. why do you do that for real yeah, dude dude like i mean I, back when i, I <laughs> bro back when i started playing iron man obviously it was just very like very macho iron man follow the rules you know and then like 
gradually got more popular. I'm guessing, obviously, you know, making videos doesn't doesn't help in that regard. But like, it made it more popular, and everyone's trying to get into it. But like, I think, and then a lot of people probably realized that, like, damn, I can't get sixty woodcutting; it's too damn slow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I like, I need to be with these people. I gotta be ahead with them. It's crazy because so many people when they they ask like, should I play this game, or is it too late? I'm like, what? Why is it too late? Because they think it's a race, dude. They like, they gotta get somewhere to be with yeah. these people. But they can't because they don't they don't want to do it or don't have the time and I guess the results cheating, you know? It's it's like these are race against the bots. They're just trying to beat the game before the game dies. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe they've already seen the future, but like it's crazy to me how many people are so desperate to reach a certain status in this game and they'll do whatever, you know, like they'll spend the money to pay for the bots or whatever, they'll, you know, pay for services, they'll bot, you know, they'll they'll buy capes, whatever. It's crazy. I yeah. blame the dopamine, bro. Because no. I swear, yeah. once you do something and you're maybe you're even cheating, but you do it and you do it fast, you still feel that little. Oh, I did something good. All right, let's yeah, do it again. It's so shallow, though. So empty. It is. It, it really is. Opinion, but I mean, in my opinion, is is some of the most like it's like it's like a reflection of. It's, I'm gonna go philosophical, right? Because we're oh. past that point, right? Like it's like a reflection of society, you know, and, and like how it it doesn't always help people realize what it means to work hard and like appreciate hard work, right? It's kind of like to them, it's just all just reaching that destination, seeing what 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 the other person on social media has done, you know, feeling the need to be a part of that, like, you know, group or vibe. You know, it's like it's yeah. kind of ruined a lot of people in, in, in those ways. Or maybe people have always been like that. And, and now they have the uh, ability to cheat their people ways. Have. You know? I mean, people have. Dude, yeah. I, I, so. I remember like 10 years ago when pre-OC was a thing, like. I remember having, and this is before I did content creation, I could only play a limited amount of RuneScape, but it was genuine bla bragging rights to have like a max account on RuneScape. I remember it just come up in conversation and I just, I would kind of eat, like, I wouldn't brag about it, but I'd just be like, yeah, I have a max account and people wouldn't believe me. They'd be like, no way. Like, you've got a 99? They'd be like, yeah, I got like six or seven. <laughs> and they just, you know, it, it was like genuine bragging rights. But um, maybe that's more of like, I don't know, maybe for people that can't play the game, like, we're obviously very privileged, because, I mean, we can play the game for 12 hours a day if we want, right? It's like, if we want to max an account, or we want to make max cash, like, we got the time to do it. Whereas a lot of other people don't, right? And, like, that's something which is quite interesting, because, like, most video games out there that have microtransactions, like, they literally survive from the average player. They don't make their money from the elite players that play all day long. They they make the money from like the dicks, Bobs and Harrys that get 30 minutes to play each evening and they end up buying a boost which costs $50 mm. that lasts a week, you know? And like obviously old school RuneScape doesn't have that. If they wanted to like monetize that, they certainly could and I don't want to see it in the game, but you know, from a business perspective, it probably is a little bit dumb that they haven't done so. I don't want it. I will preference by saying I really don't want to see any of that crap. Um, you know, a lot of games actually thrive and survive off of their very average and casual viewer. It isn't the hardcore players that make them money, like, by any means. Um, and obviously that's created a third-party market, which is the black market, where you can go and buy gold, and, you know, that's just how it's done. And it's like, here's the thing. It's like, if you can buy the gold from the black market for like a third of the price of buying it officially from Jagex, and chances are you're not going to get banned because so many people do it, why wouldn't you do it? I mean, although with that being said, they recently did say, I think they said recently in a blog post, they were going to be cracking down on people mm -hmm. that were, um, yeah, this was the Doodle Arena blog they did. They said they were cracking down on people that were buying gold. And I think it was like a one warning system now that they're talking about having and people are going to be getting banned a lot easier for buying gp it's not just the sellers now like it's buyers also and i think they I were talking about how many having... people are getting banned from that like I, yeah oh, did you how, see the... how many people actually got banned from that point going forward like did, did you see nice the new know? tweet they, i think they did a tweet actually uh i think lots Tyron did a tweet oh, yeah, it was that. like something about like 500 inferno capes got removed but bunch of people's accounts got oh right here i got it it says um latest real world trade update you no, know, uh, since May seventeenth, gold sellers, uh, farmers, um, R three ten thousand gold seven trillion old school seventy six thousand um eight trillion, 
uh, <laughs> sent out warnings and bans over the past month to over 12,000 players who have bought gold. Oh, my God. In addition, 401 Inferno Capes buyer bans plus removals going out. Who the out fuck's to- still buying Inferno Capes these days, dude? What? Dude, they, it's pumping, bro. It, they said something like over 50% of Capes are bought, you know? What the uh, hell? Wow. Time, so. That's nuts. Yeah. Dude, by yeah. the way, flipping old school, to go back to your question about why is the market and why is it so bad on old school RuneScape, I think that's a really good question. I think it comes down to quite a lot of different things. I think, like you said, it's quite easy to make bots for this game because it's such an old game built on a very old, uh, it's like JavaScript, right? Uh, I feel like it's relatively easy to make a bot for this game. I think also the learning curve for RuneScape, although we all know how to play, the learning curve is huge. Like when you think about how many years you were a noob when you first started playing this game, the learning Still curve is massive. Like mm-hmm. as a new player, making your first mill might take you months and it, you can buy it for like a few dollars. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. there are many different reasons to why it's so bad in old school. I feel like part of the reason easily bought it, learning curves, absolutely massive. New players are going to be almost incentivized to have that boost to help them forward. If they like stand any chance of playing the game. But yeah, like in this game, it feels like everything can be gated by money to some degree, like skills. You can just, spend a lot of money and level them up quickly pretty much all gear requires money there aren't like they're obviously untradeables but like for the most part if you're playing a main account you just you just need so much money and like i'm not sure that compares to like world of warcraft or new world or whatever but like this game is so gold centric at least compared to other mmos i played or at least a little bit more anyway yeah i agree now i have an idea for the botting bro so what if RuneScape found that your account bought a certain amount of gold, and then what they did is they didn't ban you, but they charged your card what that would have costed in bonds. <laughs> oh, dude. And then you just woke up the illegal. next day. <laughs> I mean, I, it might solve it. I don't know. Uh, just, just I think you'd have some lawsuits on your hands. Just there. send some really <laughs> heavily worded letters, I think, to everyone in the mail. <laughs> like my, my service internet service provider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, I think you know, I don't know. I, I, I truly believe, though, with these steps that are coming into the game, like the GE tax, I think that if you are a player who enjoys RuneScape and you genuinely love this game and you have any nostalgia tied to it, any love at all, like, with these kind of updates, I think that you should try and support Jagex because it's like... They're not trying to screw people over here, and they're also not trying to make people billionaires, although that may be a consequence of this listing of items. But at the end of the day, like they're actually trying to make the game last as long as possible and just continue it going down a good yeah. path. It's beneficial you know? for both both them and us, you know? Yeah. They want to play the game, they they want to make money, and I think there is a healthy balance that can make it work together, you know? Sure. I hope they find it. I really do. <laughs> yeah, um, I think they're in the process. <laughs> so, in my mind, when I think of a game, I kind of think of, like, what items can I get? What's the PvP like? And is there something to really save up for, right? And in RuneScape 3, right, which was old school RuneScape back in the day, that'd be, like, party hats, right? Their item constantly goes up. There's no more in supply. Uh, just really good fundamentals. Do you think something like that in RuneScape would be possible? Not a party hat, not untradeable, nothing like that. But maybe they found an item that was so powerful that they would put a tax on the on the item to where it would almost make it just a little deflationary, right? To where over time it will just constantly go up. It's not going to skyrocket or anything, but if you hold this item, it's not a lot are coming in the game. Uh, only mm. you own a certain amount like the Ellie. And when you have it, it's powerful. And say in another year, you're going to know because it's a little deflationary that it's probably going to cost more than when you bought it now. Like, it's just, that's the item to pine for. Should we have that in RuneScape? What do you guys think? I would like that. I don't know. Like, like, I, I wish they did it. Go up over time, like, just because they slowly removed them? Like, kind it of? would show how many are coming in the game and then, like, the tax rate on it and the burn. Yeah would just kind of make it so that they're coming in just not as often, or maybe, like I said, deflationary, where they're just... That would be like getting... the epitome of the rich get richer SMH kind of meme, I think. Yeah, well... Yeah, but something that's like, if you save for it, and it's end game, yeah. you can afford it, and then once you get it, you're like, okay, I don't have to stress now. I have this item. It's going to always be in my bank. And then that makes it even more rare. And it's just, we're just talking about the end game items. You could buy bonds, maybe. 
that might work. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I kind of wish they they did that a long time ago, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they set out the standard of no rares, essentially. You know, no limited yeah. time items. So didn't someone have like a, a, a pie from the most recent like Halloween or the most recent Halloween event? Yeah, it was like a pumpkin pie. And it was like it was tradable and they forgot to get rid of it from his account. So it was kind of like a discontinued <laughs> item. The one time. <laughs> yeah, the the thing, pumpkin yeah. Pie. I mean, yeah, I think they I, nuked I, it from him. I used to love rares. I, I loved yeah. the party hat concept because back mm -hmm. in the day, it yeah, made it feel cool. like there was no such thing as having too much gold. Like, mm -hmm. you, you had five bill cash, you had all of the items in the game. Well, guess what? You bought another blue party hat. And then maybe you bought another one after that. And like, there was just like, there was no such thing as having too many party hats back in the day. Like, that yeah. just was, that was not a thing. And I miss it, but I feel like, it wouldn't work now. Like I'm not just, sure if it, it could happen again. Because yeah, like so everyone will knows, now. everyone will be storing these seasonal items. Like I just don't yeah. know if it would ever be that scarce. Well, it wouldn't be a party hat, right? It would, have to it be would a more new be. Item. It wouldn't even be a new item. I'm just saying, like these items that are like best oh. in slot, like the Ellie, right? That's really just the best shield in the game. There's no doubt about it, and it's super rare. So what if the way they implemented the burns is that it would almost burn, uh, burn them to the point where they're just like barely coming in the game where if you hold this item it will always be higher than when you bought it just because it's constantly just always the best item in the game but it's just the rarest thing to get i want something so f finale or uh, just like a final in runescape to where it's like having to earn these items isn't incredibly easy and once you get them it's worth having them and keeping them kind of kind of like a rare but where we make best in slots rare is what I'm saying. Like if the third age druidic or something was like the best in slide item. Yeah. Then that would be <laughs> super rare. And it wouldn't be like overpowered or anything, but it's like if you had yeah. the money, there's something to shoot for. I don't know. I kinda like that idea. Fun. I hope we're slowly <laughs> heading wished. there. But I don't just gives... I, yeah. I, I, I think I, that mm. a Jagged made their stance pretty clear on how they're not gonna have rare items in the game or untri or discontinued items, sorry. Um, yeah. I think it would be really nice, but I think I think we're past that. I feel like that is something which is missing from the game, and I wonder if there would be a way that they could do it. Like maybe they could have like an event that happens, and like you have to I don't know. They could do something where you have to do like a checklist of stuff to get this certain item, and like this item is then you know you get one per account maybe, and it's like it's then discontinued, but everybody can get it if they want to. I don't know. I don't think they would. I doubt it, mm. but yeah, they already did like eight years of not doing that. But yeah. honestly, bro, I'm just I I'd be more concerned about them just making account security better than it is now before any of that stuff even comes out. Because I don't want to get that shit and get then get hacked for it, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. bro, like dude. All right, I got another idea. This one's actually about rares, dude. All right, yeah. this is clue scrolls. You know how like black calves are super cheap. What if you were able to generate? one like the rarest hat that you could trade but the chances of getting this hat are so crazy and the only way to get it is you have to gamble these trail treasure items so you buy them you put them in and if you lose they're burned and if you win you get some like crazy rare hat right that has just like a ridiculous chance of being rolled you know to the point where you're losing money unless you're just getting super lucky and that will take clue scroll items out of the game and it'll bring a sense of rare items into the game. I don't know. Just one I, last I like idea. That would be fun. I would go for that one for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I, by the way, uh, I know it's a bit off topic, but I was speaking recently about the next update. They're bringing Torva into the armor. Sorry, Torva into the game from RuneScape 3. Mm -hmm. And um, something that I said, right, is I don't mind RuneScape taking runescape free content and bringing it over to old school runescape because i feel like there's a lot of stuff on runescape free which is actually really good and we could benefit from having it and vice versa to runescape free from old school um but the one thing that i did say was now this is my personal opinion you guys can think however you please i personally don't think the aesthetics of the torva armor that they've proposed looks very nice personal mm -hmm. take on it no and i don't like it either <laughs> The the one thing that I would say is that if Jagex are going to move content from RuneScape 3 to old school RuneScape, I would at the very least appreciate it if the stuff coming into the game was aesthetically designed so that it fits into old school 
and especially within its place of value. So if you compare the Torva armor, and unfortunately mm. we can't pull a picture up, but it's on the most recent blog post. If you compare that to like Inquisitor, which it's going to be better than Inquisitor. Inquisitor looks amazing compared to it. Like it looks clunky and dull. I would yeah, love to too, see them rework it. Yeah, this is too like skinny, you know? Yeah, it kind of yeah, lacks like a strong path. identity. It just kind yeah. of looks like Dragonstone armor a bit. Like it's just kind of yeah, that weird, not mm -hmm. defined RS3 kind of looking armor. Yeah. Or like, it needs to be more chunky, man. Like Torva Hell used to yeah. be chunky. Yeah. Dude, it was the thick boy armor. And also a fault, a fault that I had as well was that they could add a... Um, uh, what's it called? Like ornament kit for the Torva armor to like master clue scrolls. Like just throw sure. that in there and then you could change it to look a certain way. I think that would be awesome. And imagine yeah, how like expensive those kits would be. They'd be well expensive. They'd be like a chunky ornament kit that just makes you look well, chunky. Well, I, I think it should be chunky Block. to begin with. It, it should be chunky yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it was how it used to be. And then they could fuck it up if they want. <laughs> yeah. Just make it so it looks like you're wearing a bulwark as a plate body. Mm. Bro. <laughs> you could do like every piece of armor and it burns one bulwark per ornament kit. I'm just saying. Uh -huh. I mean. Like it just... <laughs> Dude, the, it's like it looks clunky and the legs are too skinny. I wish we could yeah. show you the picture right now. Yeah, maybe, bro, maybe it looks funny. like it, lo it looks like you're wearing dehyde, bro. It's like a dehyde yeah. ornament kit. Yeah. Like no, like it needs to be something which is just so recognizable. Like I would even, I would go as far as to say that Torag's the Torag plate body is more aesthetically pleasing than that plate body, in my opinion. Just it's because beefy. it's at least the Torag plate body has like a dad bod. It's got like a belly on, yeah. you know? It's like, it stands out where this just seems like dull and clunky. Dude, this is like the skinny jeans in middle school, bro. Yeah, it's like, like really constricted, bro. Like, stop. I couldn't put them on, man. It it's hurt. out of fashion, all right? So I'll change it back to. My thighs was. are too thick. Got the thunder yeah. going on down yeah. there. The helmet spikes <laughs> are weirdly short, too. I don't know. It's like a little crown. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, all, it barely looks like the Torva that I know, actually. Yeah. Now that I look at it more. It, I it, more hate it. <laughs> it definitely needs to be worked on. But speaking of yeah. Torva next and all of that, we are going to have a podcast soon discussing all of this stuff. But before, while we had flipping old school RuneScape on, we take full advantage of his minds. And uh, dude, I mean, we've spoken about a lot here. Do any of you guys have any more uh, subjects you guys want to talk about? Well, yeah. Nah, on I'll, on I'll your topic, you I would love to know flipping old school's impression on what do you think would be a good item to merch, maybe swing trade for next, for raid three. Coming good up. question good question i mean next the, the obvious one is the army of crossbow because not only is it going to be sunk within the update you're gonna have to like combine it with the new crossbow or whatever uh it's also going to be very useful at next so that would probably be or any crossbows of any kind or you know some yeah, armor they, 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 they mentioned something that. about it yeah they <laughs> mentioned something about it yeah. being weak to a it's crossbow it, it, in the blog, they mentioned that. So, I mean, that's by far the most obvious one, but mm. yeah, there are others. <laughs> Dude, how how it... many bulwarks should someone buy to prepare no. for these events, <laughs> in your opinion? Five, ten, less than a hundred? <laughs> okay, so around ten to a hundred. Okay, sorry, Race to Go, what were you saying there? I was just going to say, interesting fact about the uh, crossbow that they've put up is something we could have. The actual history and lore behind it, I had a bunch of RuneScape free players explaining this to me on my stream. I love it. Apparently, it's carved from the body of, like, one of Nex's siblings, right? Then, like, yeah, still hard for. Which is super which... fucking cool. Like, I love that. Like, it's literally, like, it came from, like, the corpse of a Nex. Which right? body part? The, uh... Oh, dude. <laughs> I, I have no idea. But, dude... I just thought of a question real quick, and maybe we could wrap up on this one. Question that I said at the very beginning of this podcast before we started. So, as somebody who is known for being so fantastic at flipping and making money off the Grand Exchange, my question to you is, is there a correlation between being able to be good at flipping on old school RuneScape to maybe looking at the stock market in real life or something along those lines where you can use the experience that you've had from old school in real life to gain a real life profit do you think there's a correlation or do you think that you should just be cautious and maybe like you know take it easy with that kind of stuff i mean i think there are some transferable skills but i wouldn't say it's like you're gonna be an amazing day trader just because you know merching on the grand exchange it's more so just learning a lot about a certain topic or niche like we all know a ton about runescapes so we'll be heavily advantaged on that like market but i don't know much about like most 
stock trading markets at all. Like, so I wouldn't be very successful unless I learned a bunch. So I wouldn't say like the specific skills I have would be like immediately transferable, but like it couldn't hurt. I don't think. Yeah. I, I think, I think it's a pretty good um, bridge to actually learning how to do day trading, right? Because if you think about it, day trading is where you learn one, two, three, four companies really well. You know their patterns. What do you do on RuneScape for flipping, right? You know the patterns. You mm -hmm. know the bottoms. You know when to buy. You only you only really trade for a couple minutes a day if you want. And then for day trading, you have these big upcoming mergers or something that goes down. Well, RuneScape, you got updates and upgrades and say something's going to become more rare. So it's definitely not something you can just walk into, but I swear there is a lot of similarities to RuneScape trading and then like day trading. There are definitely like a lot, definitely some parallels, like, but I would not expect to be good at day trading. No. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, I think that's wise and very humble of you to say. I think that you'd be a billionaire, man. I think you're wasting all of your time <laughs> on RuneScape. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. What am I doing here? So, yeah. nah, <laughs> you don't need to be a billionaire, bro. Time to buy yeah. some JPEGs. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Radio, dude, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on, mate. Thank you so much for yeah. coming on. Um, we will link all of your social medias down below. I'm sure a lot of people know who you are. And uh, it's been great to have you, man. It really has. Thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, man. Appreciate the talk.